What's good, folks? What is good? It's another week, another Wednesday, so you already know what that means. It's a brand new PD and J. What's good today? I'm your host, Jay. I'm your host, Pocket. What? There's no commercial today. No, you want to know why? We don't need one. You want to know why? We don't need one. But you know why? We got somebody in the building that we want to share with you that's been, that that's, that's not necessarily a... Uh, uh, new to us but a very special guest let's give it up for the one we need one of your introductions real quick go for it yo representing the, the Lou. Lou. no we didn't get nelly all so don't get your panties in a bunch we didn't get nelly. <laughs> just, just, just but we got none other than mr sellout himself mr you show up you show out chris mosley what's good with you chris how you been man Can you hear us? Chris. Chris. Uh-oh, we might have audio difficulties, everyone. Hold on for a second. Chris, can you hear us? One second, folks. We're having a little small technical difficulties. Chris, can you hear us? Okay. He's... Let's go to commercial. We're going to go to a commercial real quick. Everybody can come right back. Are you a business owner or someone looking for more ways and avenues to advertise and promote? Look no further. Contact us today for an advertisement. Email PDNJ Media Productions LLC at gmail.com for more info. Promotions are everything. What are you waiting for? Hey, you. Me? Yes, you. What up? Are you ready to take your brand to the next level? Hell yeah. Jalen Designs can help you with just that. Word? From laptop skins. You lying. Promotional flyers. Yo, son. Promo videos. I need that. OBS switch overlays and backgrounds. Hey, yo, let me get that. Professional one sheets and so much more. Oh, my God. Please visit our website. I'm on it today to check out our designs. Get it! Follow us on social media at Gotta Love Me World. Follow it! GLM Designs are here to take care of all your graphic needs. Who's ready for some fun? Who enjoys a podcast where the host speaks about what's on their minds and doesn't hold back? PD&J What's Good Today is an open format podcast hosted by Pocket and j Dub the King. Let's talk about sports. Let's talk about music. Let's just have an interesting conversation. If you have any topics for us to discuss, email PDNJ Media Productions LLC at gmail.com. Tune in to PDNJ What's Good Today every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube Live at J Dub the King. And folks, we are back. We are back. Let's see if we were able to fix our technical difficulties here. Chris, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Absolutely. Hey, there we go. 
I could do the intro all over again. Yes, you have oh, to. Man. Yes, you have right, to. Here we go. <laughs> well, if y'all don't get y'all a white man on the technical side of this, and then, and, and, and. <laughs> hey, you absolutely right about that. No, hey, facts, facts. I can't even get mad at it's that. It's facts are for Friday, not for Wednesday. But to, y'all, y'all gotta get this right. It's for it's for Friday, not Wednesday. <laughs> we have the one you. and only Chris Mosley in the building yet yeah, once it. again, blessing us with his presence. Now, this man. What's been up with you lately, man? I know you. there's been a lot that's been going on. I'll let you tell it. What's been going on? Um, well, it's just been a lot of uh, a lot of work, basically. Um, in my business, you have to stay homeless and stay working. So the more you're at home, uh, the worse your career is probably going. So you got to stay moving. I uh, just got done headlining um, Helium Comedy Club in St. Louis. Um, that's my home city. So... Uh, that that meant a lot. I'm um, also tied it in with my dad's birthday. He just turned sixty, so that was cool. How then did I, that feel? Huh? Home city. How did that feel? Uh, well, especially when you're from where I'm from, it's it it don't even feel real. I didn't I didn't think about it until it was over. Really, I was just so in the moment, trying to make sure, you know, the materials there, everything else was going good. Uh, make sure I didn't get shot. Like, so then when I came back home, I was just like, dang, I actually did it. You know what I mean? And then I kind of let it, let it marinate from there. So it feels really good, especially, um, I'm not from a city where people are, are, we haven't earned the reputation of being too supportive. I'll just say that. So it was dope to see that people valued me in that way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, you know, and also, you know what, you're just standing awfully humble here, but if it would just, you know, I ain't gonna say we stalk you on, on social media, but from what I saw, not only did you sell out at home, but you sold out here at this new place in Chandler too. It's like you just you just banging them out left and right. Well, I, I will I will say this. Um that was that the the, the Chandler show, uh shout out to Eric Bernal. He was the one that um he's one of like the top comedy producers um out here in Arizona. Um he puts in a lot of work. So Instantly, when you're part of a Eric Bernal produced show, half those tickets are going to be gone right then and there because he's going to do a lot of that ground lead work to get people out there. He's going to contact businesses. He's going to get, you know, all kind of deals that makes it enticing for people that have never heard of you to come see you. And then, of course, there's me. So then, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a good. It was just a good uh, partnership. You know, um, I'm at the. I'm in the driver's seat of my career where I can basically say, "Just power in the word." No. You know, when you're when you're when you're in the beginning, you're kind of like a crackhead for stage time. So you're just like saying yes to whatever. Yeah, I'll do a show in a barn backyard. Yeah, I'll do a show at that KKK meeting. Like it's cool. You just say yeah to whatever. But when you're at the point where you can be like, no, nah, I'm good. You know, next time or hey, pass that on to somebody else. So when I say yes nowadays, it's it's because of that type of quality. And Eric. 99% of the time, if he asked me to do something, I'm going to say yeah. So it was real good. Mike Drop Mania is also a new comedy club um, in Chandler. So a new comedy club to comedians is like a girl making a status saying, hey, I'm, I'm sucking all dick tonight. And we we pulling up. Like, it's like we, we're going to run <laughs> through it. We running through it. And we're going to double back and run through it again. We're going to wear our ass out. And then we're gonna make a bunch of people oh, take pictures with her, everything. Like, hey, look, hey, look, she, hey, she's sucking. We're gonna let everybody know. So it was exciting to be one of the first, you know, shows, be part of one of the first shows there. It was really good too. Um, now, so I do have a question for you. Last time we left off, I knew you were doing Childish Thursdays. Is that still a thing? Um, unfortunately. Childish Thursdays, which you're you're referring to, people that don't know, it was our weekly open mic improv stand up comedy show that we had at an Airbnb mansion backyard. Um, it was owned by a nice, extremely nice young lady named Blake Humphrey, who was actually ended up being one of my good friends. Unfortunately, it's that's not going on. The childish brand is still there. We still have our live show where we do sketches and improv and stuff like that. That'll actually be. Uh, I'll go ahead and tell y'all now. Y'all don't y'all be the first people to know. Um, that'll be coming back in theaters uh, in June. So we we'll, we'll, we were in theaters before the pandemic. A specific theater called the Phoenix Center for the Arts opened back up to us. So we'll be coming back in June. 
But um, yeah, the weekly show we had in the Airbnb backyard isn't happening no more because of weak hating ass neighbors. You know what I'm saying? Like they, it was weird. Like I, I we would pass out flyers all around that neighborhood and say, hey, "Look, if you live in this neighborhood, you don't even gotta pay. Just come and chill." But I think and enjoy yourself. Yeah. yeah. And for the most part, that happened. Okay. The one guy. What happened? There was one guy who used to stand out on his balcony and watch the show for free from his balcony. And but I think what happened was um we were we were we were you know how that is, man. You start getting a little too much success to where people start feeling some kind of way. And I think because the hook to that show was you get to smoke. You know what I mean? Okay. And we had yeah. the old cannabis type things. So once we started climbing where we getting vendors and it's people smoking and we chilling. Uh, I think, and then oh, uh, Airbnb has a segment of their website called High B and B, where yeah. where they just launched that. Yeah, they, they they put our show on the cover of their website. Wow! Because of the Airbnb thing, so we partnered with them. Once we hit that, I got nervous because I was like, man, we blowing up a little quicker. <laughs> <laughs> then, but you know what I'm saying? Like once so now there's other but what was that like? How did that how did that deal come into place for you? Um just God, bro. That's all I can say. Not to tie in God and weed, but I mean it is a plan. But uh <laughs> more natural. Exactly. I see you see I didn't say you get to do crack. If it was crack, then it'd have been different, but uh, <laughs> but um the thing is, bro, like a lot of opportunities. I tell somebody the other day, 80% of the opportunities that come my way is literally, it's not me looking for it. It's literally somebody sees it, thinks of me and hits me up or someone else, you know, had this creative idea and tied me into it. I just have the ability to bring it to life. So they contacted Blake because uh, the owner of the house, because they was like, hey, we see if y'all do yeah, y'all do the cannabis stuff, and she put it all together, brought it to me, and I just blew it up. So, uh, we was able to work deals out. It was good, man. It was just rolling naturally and organically. But I think some cannabis companies started hating on her. She was she was doing her thing on the side. She was doing her thing with her business as well. So I think it was just it was about to be. I think they was trying to stop the avalanche before it got too big. I really think that's what that was. Because if we'd have been able to still, we haven't done a Childish Thursday since. Uh, before Halloween, so like like that was gonna be our our big show like before that. So if we'd have still been going by now, it'd have been out of control. So our goal was to put that put the show in different Airbnb mansions across the country that like you can do it anywhere. And we were headed there, but you know it is when one door opens, closes. How that phrase? How that phrase? Two door opens. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. I got one more question for you before I turn it over to Pocket here. Uh, the success that you've seen between Childish Thursdays and to your growth where you're at now, how does that feel? Um, unfortunately, that's one of the downsides to my mind. I have to learn to kind of be in the moment because right now all I can see is where I want to go. So I can feel the growth, but it's not where I, it's not the end, right? So I can, I, it feels good, but I don't think I fully appreciated it just yet because I'm so like, you know, I'm so you focused. Focus. You think, got, you got that vision set. Yeah. It's like, it's like when you on your way to that girl house that you finally get to smash after all this time, you see the house, you're not thinking about, all the chicks you smashed up until that point, you like, oh, I finally, I'm about to pull up here. Like, oh my God. Like, you're not thinking about like, yeah, I just smashed Tiffany yesterday. Like, no, I need to focus on getting to this girl house. This is about to be the first time, you know, ever. So it's one of those things. Like, I'm just, I'm so focused on this girl house right here that everybody else I smashed in the back of my mind. But I still recognize that I'm experienced. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say most importantly, most importantly. So now, Chris, I know you, you're doing big things and I know you got a vision, but I mean, well, how about recognition? Are you getting the recognition that you deserve? Is there anything you got coming that, or, or do you feel that you're getting, or do you think you need, you should get more? I mean, I know a lot of, a lot of people in, in entertainment, 
they don't like to toot their own horn. Right. But they like to toot their own horn. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I've kind of, um, kind of, I've kind of grown out of a humble shell for real. Like, it's, it, like I, I, I'm more aware and I'm not scared to tell somebody that. But I'm not gonna lie. Like you said in the beginning of the interview, I sold out a weekend in St. Louis. So that's about as much recognition as I can expect right now. Now, was that two or three shows? Because I, I, last time I checked, it was three, right? It was two. Uh, it was two. It, it was two. I, I got offered a third, but it was the. I was just like, nah. Like, yeah, man, like it was. It was. It was one of those things where you just gotta make make sure you don't overbite. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like yeah. once the two shows were at their capacity or whatnot, I just left it at that. Like, let's let this will look. I'll better. be back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was good. Um. So that that's pretty. Yeah. I, I I'm not complaining about any recognition right now at all. Right now it's a. Uh, this this game has a lot of ups and downs, man, peaks and valleys. So right now, you just got to enjoy the up. You know what I mean? Because regardless if you – I know people say the manifestation and stuff, the ups don't last. So it's like I'm just – I'm up here just, just enjoying it. Like, all right, cool. Sell out this, sell out this. Keep the momentum going. I got some other shows coming up, you know. So other big announcements coming up too. So just getting ready for all of that. Well, speaking about big shows coming up, like what, what's in the future? Um, well, right now I am going to be um, headlining a comedy club called the Dallas Comedy Club in Dallas, Texas. So it'll be my first time perform. It'll be my first time headlining in Dallas. Um, but I'm I'm looking forward to that. That'll be uh, in April, uh, April twenty seventh, I believe. So that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Uh, I have family down there. I got friends. Um, I went to college with some folks in Texas. Uh, my kids are there. So that's my daughters are there rather. So that's two birds and one stone. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my oldest daughter is actually, depending on the age, that she's actually old enough to come to the show. So I don't know. You know, that might be a little, you know, father daughter moment I might share. I don't know. They, she, she's 18. So I'm like, if she end up coming, that'd be, that, I think that'd be fun. Um, other shows I got just right now, I gotta kind of keep a little some of them under wraps to the ink dry, but just know that, like I said, Childish is coming back in June, and that'll be here before you know it. So that's that's awesome, man. Now, um, I know you mentioned your daughter, so you are a family guy. Um, I guess a lot of this is this for you or is it for them? Building a legacy for them is, is this really for you or is it is it you know? Um, I say this all the time. Uh, I I do comedy for myself, right? Because at any given time, your kids grow up, right? They leave the nest. They go do what they want to do for themselves. They only call you when they need money, or you know what I'm saying? It's like you can't you can't put like even my pre-show rituals has nothing to do with anybody. Because at any given time, it's that dark truth. Any given time, anybody can be gone, regardless if it's willingly or you know, just God just decided to. Hey, this is what it is. So I I try not to get attached to anything, regardless if it's a child I created or someone I'm in love with. I keep I keep my comedy about me. The benefits are for them, if that makes sense. So now it's like, hey, um, I got paid X amount to do this show, which is going to help me give you the money that you need. Or, hey, I met this level of status, so now me and my lady don't have to wait 80 minutes in line to get inside of a club or I can pay this rent or I can take us to this city or whatever the, the benefits are, are for the people that are connected to me. The comedy is for me because I'm the only one up there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like uh, I get up there and get booed. I can't bring my daughter up there. Like, Hey y'all boo her too. I do this for her. Like, <laughs> I mean, you can try that and see what happens. But... Yeah, you get booed I don't right think that's going to happen. <laughs> I don't. So normally what we do here, um, now hold on a second. You mentioned, I saw this as well. You got nominated for an award. Let's talk about that. Which totally surprised me. I had never, um, I never been nominated for an award like that. Right. So St. Louis has a show, a big show that happened at this big, ball theater called the uh, St. Louis Arts and Entertainment Awards, right? And okay. uh, my friend um, hits me up at like 10 o'clock at night with a screenshot 
saying like and it's like a i guess i guess he had voted online for me he was like he, and he tells me like don't ever tell me i ain't never did shit for you and i'm thinking <laughs> something like <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what this was. I was like, what, what is this? He was like, you don't know? And then he sent me like this post. And I guess that's the thing about the social media stuff. Like people think like I'm on there a lot because I do post videos every day. I do make stuff. Like I, I post what I post and I disconnect. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, yeah. I unplug. I go do what I got to do in life. So I clearly missed a notification where I was tagged in a special <laughs> weeks prior like i was like oh this is old like someone been told me you know no but no one called me or messaged me i found out that i was nominated to be a male comedian of the year for st louis of all places you know what i'm saying so i was just like dang so i started yeah, i started like you know a lot of people tried you know i'm from a city where we 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 too cool for everything you know what i'm saying so it's just, <laughs> I mean, that's cool, bro. But I ain't, I ain't finna be begging for votes and doing that. Man, damn that! I'm winning this. So I started posting. I'm like, hey, go click this. Go vote. I don't care if you don't live in St. Louis. Go vote. Go go. <laughs> I, I want this. We know you got our votes. Appreciate it, man. So I just uh, right now it's the final uh, round, and um, I believe June 4th is the um, award show itself. So they'll be closing the awards soon, and then. Going from there, in my mind, just keep telling people about it. Keep telling people about it. Wherever the chips fall is where they fall. There's some good. It's some good comedians on there too. Uh, this one dude, uh, um, Darius Bradford, he who was uh, on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show back in the day. Um, he's up for it. He's from St. Louis. This other dude named Willie C, who is like a like a freaking like he's a he's he's a St. Louis comedian star like you everyone that does comedy yeah, legend, right? know who he is and then the guy that who uh featured for me in my sold out show brandon taylor that's my bro he's up for it so it sucked because i had to tell people like hey this guy he was on my show don't vote for that nigga vote for me like, <laughs> i'm going at it cutthroat baby i don't give a damn like you say i i'm not going to toot my horn but i'm definitely going to toot my horn you know what i mean of course, <laughs> of course. so what can people look forward to this year? Because I know you keep talking about this year. You keep building and you're growing and we see it and we see the growth. What is the end result of what you're looking for this year versus what you did what, or was not able to achieve last year? Well, three things. Um, big produced shows that give opportunities and um, visibility to other comedians. Um, a lot of travel. I may, I'm, I'm working on my calendar as we speak. I'm, I'm hitting, I'm, my, my goal is to fill up my calendar from now to December, different cities, states, different coasts. You know what I mean? New York, Dallas, uh, Kansas city, back to St. Louis, Chicago, Florida, uh, Indianapolis, uh, Alaska, wherever the hell they going to have me at. I'm going to be there this year. And TV, bro. Like I'm about to get my audition game on. Like I'm, I'm. I think it's time to just like stop playing around with my own gift and say, okay, it's time to get on TV doing something consistently. A show. If I get, if I just get on one popping ass show, you know what I mean. That's all I need. If I get two credits on two shows that actually last, that people talk about on the timeline and make memes about. I can work that. I don't I don't necessarily need someone that works as hard as me. I don't need a big, big movie role or a big main TV character role because if you crack the door just a little bit, I can work that and 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 do something with it. You know what I mean? So if somebody comes to you with a, a part in the Tubi movie, would you do it? Damn right. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Well, I gotta say, I don't even watch Tubi. So I, <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, I'm, I noticed a lot of people started watching Tubi lately, bro. It's, it's crazy. I, I need to start. I think I'm, they I think had a start. super look. They had a Super Bowl commercial, bro. Do you yeah, know how much Super Bowl commercials cost? So they got the money. It's 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 so ingenious. Let's have a. Like that's like Uber. Uber was ingenious. Let's have Uber was the number one transportation 
company in the world and they didn't own that one car. DoorDash was the number one food delivery service in the world and they and they don't have nothing. They so two They're people, all independent owners. <laughs> so two people like what do we do? what do we do to it? We don't have to lift a finger. We don't have to produce nothing. Oh, let's let these ghetto ass niggas with these Android phones send us <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and this is facts because I know people that watch Tubi are on a fake of religious basis. And I'm like, man, Bro, we could have did better than that. My, my father, when I went home, my dad, that's little, the first day I landed in St. Louis, he was like, man, let's go hang out, let's have a beer or whatever. We didn't even leave the house. My first night we got there and he got a bar in the basement. We poured up a couple drinks and he literally, we watched Tubi movies till he went to sleep. He's addicted. <laughs> He was like, bro, I love this ghetto ass shit for some reason. I've been looking for the worst movies. He was like, I've been looking for the worst produced movies and I will watch that shit. And then, <laughs> then he'll look for the best. <laughs> Man. All right. So let's just say, just in regards to what you just talked about, about securing a role in, in a sick, are we talking sitcoms or are we just talking anything? Um, to be real, the, the, the low hanging fruit is sitcom comedy, stuff like that. It's the easiest thing to plug me into right now. Um, okay. right now that's what I'm going to be going for. You know, uh, I, I, I'm always one that respects the craft of anything and the process of anything. I, I have, I have Hollywood friends that are on TV that act that had to go through all kind of acting and bs and training and i would never want to disrespect that and say yeah throw me in a drama just you know i can look it's like no nah, i under i understand and seeing that process so i would never want to disrespect that i'm gonna just go for what i what i know i can get plugged into immediately and look natural you know what i mean um i know for a fact i can do drama i know for a fact i can do like a a, a bmf or you know one of those things because number one that's I, I typically don't even watch shows like BMF or or, or, or those big drug killer gangster movies because that's that's the neighborhood I grew up in. So I was like, if I want to see BMF, I can just stand in my driveway. Like that's no just, big just, deal. Yeah, that's a typecast, right? That's a typecast in it. Yeah. It's like, I, man, it. so I can I can I can do that. Put me in something like that. I just reenact what I did in the ninth grade. You know, stuff like that. But um, right now, the momentum is funny. The, mo the the opportunities come from being funny. So why make it harder? You know what I'm saying? Get you know, get your get your notoriety, get your stuff through what you've already been doing. That muscle has already been working out. So what's your ideal role? Um man, to be honest, if I could be two things, if I get blessed to be the main character of Let's say a hot writer has a sitcom that they want to say. I, I know I can. I know I can carry a show. I know I can. But mm -hmm. if I can be the the comic relief of another show, maybe a show that's not surrounded by comedy, but this person's supposed to be like my girls. Like they, they watch all the murder shows or the law, LAPD, and all this stuff. And they, and the show's not a comedy show, but there's some. There's like a cop or a comic a, relief, a, like a Hawaii Five O type yeah, stuff. Like yeah. Some, dunce dude that's like you think yeah, he's not. like I could do that like you know I could be the comedic relief in a serious show um or the best friend of you know um or like uh that show Mike Epps has like uh, the Upshaws oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you know he's he, he's got the mechanics that work at, at the at the at the shop that all they're all they're all real comedians like I know two of them like for real so they're just stand up comedians that clearly just improv their lines, do what they got to do, but it's consistent. They're on like every other episode. So it's like, dude, if I, if, if God, if, if, if it's meant for me to have it, I'm going to be prepared when I get it and I'm going to kill it. And then just use that and flip it, you know, because I, because I, 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 I toured with Earthquake before and he has, he sees where he wants to go. This is why I admire him because he's like 60 years old and he still is like on this path. But I told I told him, I told people all the time, if I had that man's career right now, I'd be good. You sell it out. Earthquake, 
You've been on his show on XM Radio, channel 46 or 96, I'm sorry, uh, Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio, Quake's House. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time? And you actually been to Kevin Hart's studio. Yes, very, very, very dope experience. First of all, you don't it don't look like a studio from the outside, which is very smart. Like it's it doesn't you can't tell this is Kevin Hart's nothing on the outside. It, it's in the middle of the projects. Like it's like oh, okay, this this is very smart. It's very undercover. But as soon as you open the door, you know exactly where you're at. Huh. And, okay. um, Quake Studio that he has for him is clearly his studio. Which is that that's love in itself because most radio stations, you know, it's like, okay, here's the spot that you're in right now. You look and it is so customized to Quake because I've been I've been on the road with him, so I know what his green rooms look like. Like this looks like your green room. So um that was very fun. I was just on there like a month or so ago. Um pretty much uh I'm in LA every month. So he told me anytime. Anytime you're there, just come on up there. So it's not like you know, it's it's all love. Uh, they 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 were doing the uh, like virtual show for a little minute until they opened back up the the, the studio. So now that they're back in the studio. They're like, hey, you got to come to LA, which is fine. But it's a it's always a great experience. Like I was saying, I would I would have his career now. He's selling out comedy clubs every weekend, 40, 50 weeks a year. You know what I'm saying? Like that's. And then it costs what fifty, sixty dollars to see you. You get that money, then you're in clubs where you're selling 300, 350, 400, five times a weekend. Come on, like do the math, bro. Like I don't understand when people be like, "Oh, so and so fell off." How? If the niggas <laughs> fill in comedy clubs every week and they're at let's just say at the least filling up 80 percent, how is that falling off? Not not mm -hmm. saying Quake is us. I, I, when I hear like you know like an Aries Spears, you Aries Spears, like look at Aries Spears' schedule. Forty weeks at least out the year, he's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Two shows, two shows. It's like, bro, that's come on now. <laughs> that's a lot, and I hear Quake on there all the time, man. Talking about it. It was like it's funny. I was talking to my wife about that the other day. I was like, how some people have they they say that uh, what's his name Tiffany Haddish is broke. I'm like, well, I'd rather be her broke than my broke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, like, yeah, she's she's six figure broke. I'd rather have that than you know to be broke broke. Though, you know, oh, call, me broke me. call me broke. Call me broke. That way, that way, you don't have random cousins coming out of nowhere asking you for something. I'd rather I'd rather have that reputation. That means I can walk in Walmart and nobody bother me. <laughs> <laughs> so just to transition here you you have a, a fitness regimen that you're faithful at doing is that right um, how is that so uh, yeah i mean I'm a, I'm a retired football player i played at every level so it was just like i just never but i realized that at a certain point in my career i wasn't I wasn't even working out for football. I was working out for myself. Like I just really liked the idea of um, extending my life as long as possible so that I can be in my kids' lives and their life. My, my goal is to live to see my great grandchild. Now I don't mean I'm in a rush for my daughters to have kids or my son, but it's like, I wanna be, you know, around and drop knowledge and do stuff like that. So I really work out for that. Plus, you know, I know at some point my son gonna think he can beat my ass. So I just really do that. You know, I really, I'm, that's really the only reason why I'm doing anything. I just, I want to be ready for the day that my son be like, hey, you know what? I ain't coming do. by midnight. Like, I right, bet you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want to box right now? How, whatever age that is. <laughs> well, how old is he now? So, um, but it is good. I actually uh, started a fitness. Well, it's not necessarily a fitness, but it's a. Oh, oh, there we go. My bad. But yeah, I'm just I'm just looking forward to just uh, I actually started like a fitness page. It's not necessarily a fitness page, more so like motivation, but. You know, I clearly throw on there that I work out and stuff. But um, yeah, I just I, you know, I get I made it like a lifestyle thing. Like you just I go to the gym five six times a week, run, do stuff like that. And I'll be doing a lot of charitable events, tying into that. There's a reason why I do it because 
I'll be doing like a lot of marathon runs this uh, this year as well, which is actually I'm more excited about that than anything else. Really? So talk about that. What are you what, what, as far as your charitable works and your the marathons that you got going on? What's that looking like this year? So what I'm setting up right now, I'm just getting myself in, in better cardio shape or whatnot. But uh, there's a lot of um, there's like these 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 websites and stuff where you can sign up, and there's a lot of uh, 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 marathon runs out here in Arizona that just you know, run for multiple different causes. So I'll be picking different causes uh, to run for. Um, it'll vary. It'll vary from like letting people out that's in jail for like weed and cancer and you know stuff like that. But my biggest thing, I'm gonna go ahead and just tell y'all why it's on my on my heart to say it. My biggest thing is I'm gonna go um, back home and run from i'm gonna run from my house um all the way to the st louis county jail which is about it's gonna be about 28 miles some something like that and the You're reason why run that? yeah I, I, I mean i know i can uh it ain't i ain't gonna run it like this <laughs> <laughs> um but what i am gonna do is um shut up dog in here going crazy uh, what I am going to do is um, the reason why I'm doing it is because I've been to jail a few times or whatever. And one time I was locked up on some like stupid traffic ticket stuff or whatever. And the dude that was my cellmate, he was he had been there for like two weeks. I don't think jail is for everybody at all, you know, but like this dude didn't need to be in there at all. Like like it was just like, yo, you don't need to be here. You don't need to be here at all in any way whatsoever. Um, my people are driving around collecting bond money or whatever. This man was in there for two, almost three weeks, and his bond went up to $75. They wouldn't give him time served. They wouldn't give him nothing. It was just They were just being real ignorant about it. But it was just him and his grandma, and his grandma couldn't work a phone. So he was just literally, why me? Why my people getting $800 for me? I just felt bad. It was just like, dang, like, I'm not even going to tell him that I'm about to be out of here. So that's when I was running one day, it triggered that in my mind. Like, while we're out here doing our thing, it's people that's stuck in that. So yeah. in my head, in my head, I run, I raise money independently. I have people donate. And then I pick some folks, you know, and I bond them out. Well, let me ask you this, because that, 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 that's very notable and admirable of what you do. How do you feel about our current justice system? I feel like it's up backwards and inside out. You, I, feel like, I feel like nowadays, I feel like nowadays you can find an example to support any argument, right? So people are always say like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with our justice system. Look at these examples and i can say there's everything wrong with our justice system look at these examples but overall like this is just too much you know what i mean like my um uh, my cousin was murdered a couple years ago right. and, and it was and and she was murdered by a man that had been locked up like every other day for three weeks prior clearly out of his mind clearly not right in the head clearly on drugs and they would just, they would lock him up for a day, let him out. Lock him up for a day, let him out. Lock him up for two days, let him out. Lock him up the same day, let him out. Lock him up again. It's like, bro, get this man some help and stop, like, just going through that. And one day, and, and this was leading up to it. Like, this was, like, every other day for two or three weeks, he's just getting locked up, let out, locked up, let out, locked up. They're just dumping him back on the streets. And one day he got a hold of a gun, lost his mind, and got to shooting up, uh, 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 shooting up Applebee's. And my cousin was the only one that got shot. Randomly, just there celebrating a best friend that had just, she was like the first female fire, fire captain in that area. So they out there celebrating, being productive, you know, just chilling. And she gets killed. So it's like, it's like there was, there was a system, the system failed. You know what I mean? This man should be somewhere getting mental help. Now, okay, oh, we got him locked up for good now. But what y'all could have, you know, advised as you say that you've done that. So that's just one of many examples I can be on. We'd be here all night. But um, 
it's one of those things, man. Like, I know that the reason why anything is messed up or allowed to be messed up in this country is because the, somebody's benefiting from it. You know what I mean? So I we let's not be foolish and think, oh, this needs to be fixed and it will be. No, it's messed up for a reason. There's a reason why certain cities have a reputation for being bad because somebody's making money on it being bad. You know what I mean? So in my head, okay, cool. I'm not going to try and be no type of like big hero or whatever that they look at and be like, hey, kill them. I'm just going to change my little pocket of the world here and there. You know what I mean? So the way I want to do the charitable run that I want to do, I want to run, raise the money independently, make it all organic, go bond out some folks, you know, I ain't, it's not like I'm freeing murderers or nothing like that, but you know what I'm saying? If you have thrown some BS charges, some, you know, like, oh, you have some weed on you and they tried to make it seem like you was El Chapo or, you know what I mean? You <laughs> do it 10 miles over and now they, they won't let you out because, well, yeah, bond these people out and also team up with some lawyers and whoever that's willing to like help them go through things to stay out of jail. You yeah. know what I mean? If you got into it with your baby mama and she called the police and lied on you and said the X, Y, and Z, all right, cool. I'm going to find you out and I'm going to get y'all, I'm going to team y'all up with this uh, counselor, this co-parenting counselor, so that y'all can understand, so that your baby mama can understand, like, stop calling the police on this man unless he did something. You know what I mean? Like, he can't be a father in jail. Uh, and how long you been doing this? I haven't. I, I've, I've been training for it. I thought of this idea three years ago in the middle of my run I was like, I'm a, I'm going to do this. It's, you know, life kind of caught me up or whatever, and I ain't feel confident in my um, endurance to make the run. But um, now I'm at the I'm at the height of everything. Like, I'm in the best shape of my life. So it's like, all right, get it ready and set a date and make it happen. Like, I'm not even trying to make – I think I think when I first thought of the idea, I tried to do it too professional, too big. Like, I was sending emails to folks and – trying to get it all like and at the end of the day i just gotta do it you know what i mean like, yeah. if, I, like yeah. if i just organically do it raise my own bread now those those non-profits those other places they see okay he did it on his own we ain't gotta worry about getting scammed or schemed or nothing like that it actually happened i'm gonna do it there then i'm gonna come to phoenix and i'm gonna do it here as well i love the thought man i you know what? That sounds like something we could partner with you too. I don't know about the running part. I'm getting <laughs> great in the tooth here, but uh, you know, I, you definitely got my support, our support as a whole. I think it, it'll do a lot for people. Thank you. Yeah. So that that was one of those things. Like my boy was like, "Yeah, you can make it to where other people can sign up and run with you." And blah. And, and I'm not saying none of that can't happen. It's just it, the 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 it was just a lot. You know what I yeah. mean? I'm like, yeah. let me. I'm the one that came with the idea. Let me just jump out there and do it. And like you said, if it's on your heart to help, you I won't have to pitch it to you. You'll just, you'll right. just, you'll just know. Like I don't, I don't want to make this too business. Like I just want to do it. Get people that can say, that can look at that, hear it, and say, yeah, let's 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 do that. Let's partner with that. You know, my girl was worried that branding wise, she was like, Are you worried that certain people would would look at that like, oh, he's trying to free criminals? And it's like if you look at it like that, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, nah, some people, you and, and anyone in this country should be able to admit there's someone in jail that probably shouldn't be there or shouldn't be there as long as they are. So let's get them out and have you know, and get you know, them out. You mentioned that. Um, we had we were talking about for our show today. Um, there was a gentleman that was it 90 years, it's supposed to get 90 years and got up in 30. Oh, no. heard about that okay, yeah. So a man. Uh, got back in 1988 or 1989, he got accused of being an accessory to a murder. Uh, to be the drive guy. Yeah, um, and ended up getting 400 years out in Florida. <laughs> now, yeah, exactly. Now, here's the thing about it, though. They, the only thing that put this man behind bars was an eyewitness testimony that turned out to be flawed. So they released him. After spending 34 years in prison. And there's no amount of money that can get that back. No, none. And what if this dude, not granted, like, you know, just because you, I say it all the time, being realistic, just because I got locked up for this amount of time doesn't guarantee that I would have changed the world in that time. But it's still my right to have that chance. You get what I'm saying? I don't care if dude was 
just working at 7-Eleven every day. You never know what his presence in the outer world could have done to change the world. And you took that from him. You took that from us. There's no amount of money that can fix that, man. That's horrible. I definitely got some money, though. You would have gave me $30 million for every year. I don't know. Like, you'd have figured, I'd have figured out something. That's crazy. But at least yeah. he's out. At least he's out, though. God bless that he's out. But can you imagine? I, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to imagine. It's disheartening to hear about it. And the, the thing that makes me upset about it, it was swept under the rug. A lot of people don't know about that story. And that's the, yeah. like I said, the, the system is messed up, but it is allowed to be messed up because somebody benefited off of this man being in jail. Being in know, the key thing out of the whole story, Chris, is that he was the only one caught, quote unquote, only one caught, nobody else out of this whole thing. They, they caught him as a driver. They have nobody had nobody else that was caught. He didn't commit the burglary that yeah. led to somebody he wasn't, getting killed. Because they, they, I guess what happened, the um, family of the survivor, the, uh, I'm sorry, the family of the person that was murdered, they did their own research and found out it wasn't his car. It had nothing to do with that car. He was on the other side of town. Like They built this case and kept They had an running. independent investigator yeah. that looked into it and found out all these flaws and then found out, oh, well, the only thing that's holding this man is the eyewitness testimony. They discredited that. Granted him a new trial, he's out. So he didn't know the people that did the crime, is what you're saying? No. Pretty no, much. No. I was going to say, if he knew the people, that was kind of his fault, because I would have been in there. <laughs> like, hey, bro, after, like, I'll give you, I give you 30 days for somebody. I'm not even doing 30 days. 30 minutes. 30 minutes from the time I get <laughs> the jail. Somebody better claim my innocence because if you don't, when I get here, I'm dropping Earl. Uh oh, I dropped <laughs> Earl's name, Tommy, uh, Rick, Bobby, David, Carl, all them niggas. I'm naming my neighbors. I'm snitching on my father. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't lying. I'm snitching on the person that's cheated on their home on the test back in high school. <laughs> Everybody going. <laughs> The girl that didn't want to give me your number at the club, I remember what you looked like. I described you. They drew you out. Here they come. Oh, man. So did you hear about this Takashi 6 9 business? I literally just heard about it this morning because uh, I saw my girl. I, was, I made it to the gym. She said, don't get done like 6 9 <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? But um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, bro. I think really deep about a lot of stuff. And I seen the pictures, which looked horrible but then i saw the video and i was like is this real and i don't mean real as in he didn't clearly he really got his ass beat but what why would people are we it's either one or two things this is fake and he's just doing it to stay like hey y'all look you know tweet about me or whatever now i'm gonna make a song about getting jumped or we have become so addicted to likes views comments engagement like this is the real cocaine because when i was young and i seen niggas getting jumped in the bathroom nobody was recording and putting their face on nothing so for That's someone right. to say oh let's commit this crime and wait a minute i just got this new iphone 12 look at the camera bro and you can hear the audio i want to be famous too you're jumping a snitch it's not <laughs> like you it's not like you he's not proven to Point niggas out. He's going to snitch on. So do you eat, or are you that addicted to going to jail? Is there a boyfriend in there that you miss? You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta go back to see my man's. And I go to Takashi Six Nine. He gonna tell on me. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I. That's what makes me think either either we're that lost as a society. We feel like we have to record everything, and we need this much attention, or this was some type of a very oddly staged, you know, which is another thing, addicted to attention. Either way, his face has to hurt right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought about that, too, about maybe it could have been a setup. You think about this. His security was nowhere around. Nowhere around. Like, well, does he have the money to pay for his security? Well, they said they were in the, they were in the gym. Oh, they, they just weren't at the sauna. Oh, okay. 
Uh, so the security guard was there. Hey, you know what? Go to the bathroom. I'm gonna knock out this other set on the bench. And, and, and that's when, uh, yeah, I. That's why, like, I'm glad I have a big family because two of my brothers are my security. I had one of my brothers my security when I went home to St. Louis. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not saying like I'm that because I'm like I'm like super big time or nothing, but they want me to get used to certain things. So I was like, all right, cool. But I'm not really necessarily accustomed to having security around. So as the weekend is going by, I'm going here, going there. I'm jumping in and out of this. And I'm all of you phasing my brother's like getting mad at me. He's like, nigga, stop, stop. Let, like, let me walk with you type stuff. And I'm like, oh, my bad. Like, I'm just, I'm all up in strangers' faces. Like, yeah, show me your gun. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, know, like, you, gotta, you gotta stay with me. So it's like, I, I, I can't, I can't imagine a world where, you know, I get caught up like that because of my security. It might be because of my own ignorance, but not because my security guard, who was my family, then set me up. Like, uh, if that have you, if you see that done to me, I'm telling you right now, it's fake. I don't give a damn if you see my <laughs> lip hanging off my face. If you see that done to me and I got security, y'all can I can be the first people to say, hey, y'all, I'm telling y'all right now, that's your stage. <laughs> ain't no way. That ain't no way. That's crazy, though. Well, folks, we got the one, the only Chris Mosley in the building. He's definitely going to be with us throughout the whole show. Uh, any questions that our fans might have, definitely put them in the comments, uh, and we'll see if he answers them. We might not be able to get to them all, but we'll see which ones we can get to. Yeah. All right, Chris, we never talk sports with you. We're going to, we're going to go there. This is part of our show as well. Okay. What is your – like you said you play football. So – I'm going to ask you this. I don't think we've ever asked this. So are you the Lamar Jackson of your career, or do you actually have an agent? Man. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell, I say this all the time. You can always tell, bro. When you look at these people or celebs, no matter if it's sports, or you can tell who has friends and what kind of friends they have. Lamar Jackson has no real friends. Because a real friend would say, nigga, where's the white boy in the suit that's supposed to get the money for you? You get what I'm saying? I, 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 of course you have an agent. I wasn't even a, bro, I was a practice squad player and I had two agents. Did you? Know you? know what I'm saying? I had oh. two. I had two. And I only had two because I wanted this nigga to check this nigga. Like I wanted them for peace. <laughs> Checks and balances. Yeah. So it's like, when you're dealing with that type of money, that type of industry, that type of these 32 NFL owners, they're not going to bend for one nigga. Nigga, we will move. The average NFL career is three years, bro. And they say statistically, it only takes you three years to be removed from the NFL for people to forget about you. That was pre-social media. So if you out of, if you out the loop, look, and we say shit about Tom Brady, it ain't even been a year yet. If you out the loop, for about a year and a half, two years, we don't care. So it's like he's he tripping. I understand the concept. I live on love and happiness and faith. And nigga, leave that at the door. This is business. Well, apparently, there's a disconnect. Apparently, even teammates are coming out saying that he might not even be a, a Raven next year. Oh, that's, the, that's the thing. No, it, bro, it, that's your tweet on that one. It don't take much to flip somebody. If I'm if I'm an NFL owner, okay, put yourself. Everyone, all three of us right now, we're all three NFL owners. We're old, we're white, we're racist, we hate niggas unless they got pads on. Okay, cool. <laughs> this, <laughs> one black guy is causing a little bit of trouble, right? He's over here trying to get you gonna walk your black ass with no college degree, with your mother with no college degree, into my office and walk out with two hundred fifty million dollars. No, nigga. So then I call you niggas. Man, do y'all see this nigga, bro? Do y'all see what this nigga on? <laughs> yeah, we need to figure out a way to get him the fuck on up out of here. Like, get like we don't we don't care how fast you are because football is time limit. Like your career is like this when it comes to your life. Uh -huh. You're only gonna be Lamar Jackson for about two to three years. After that, you're gonna get hurt, you know what? But to get to the flip part, all I gotta do is now I call up your left guard. Now I call up your right tackle. 
right? Who I got a video of this nigga cheating on his wife with three white women that he ain't know I had, right? Because they got FBI agents and FBI working for them. I got the hey, come on in here, Larry. Hey, so check this out. This is you, ain't it? Oh shit, where you get that from? Don't worry about that. So check this out. I need you to go on. <laughs> I need you to go on first take. You know what I'm saying? I need you to talk to Stephen A. Smith. I need you to tell them that you feel like Lamar Jackson is 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 losing his mind. Tell him you just talk to him. You know, do all like and 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 that's not people like when they hear me talking. Oh, that's conspiracy. No, it's just that's business. I've been in rooms with these old white folks, bro. They collude stuff when mm -hmm. they're trying to get you to do something. I would do it. Look at what we do with the little bit of power we got, right? We 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 be having a little bit of power. Nigga be a manager at McDonald's and be like, hey, man, don't hire that woman, man. You know, whatever. Imagine what you do with billions. So, nah, like he needs to get a, a manager. He needs to just bite the bullet. You're not going to win against 32 billionaires and you sitting outside talking about give me a cup no they, it's, it's the message they don't want to send they don't want to spark if i let this one dude get 250 if i let him get a hundred if i let you get a dollar doing it outside of the conventional way that we created that's gonna create a spark in someone else's mind if i let this if i let your single mother with no degree or manager experience Walk into my office and walk <laughs> out where a hundred million dollars and you a nigga. Oh hell no! Like, cause, cause that you know how women are, bro. Black women they gonna run with that. And as you can see, she <laughs> ran and got that money. And that, now every black single. Now, woman, if he was white, would you think the dynamics be different though? Huh? If the if he was white, do you think the dynamics would be different? Oh, no, I'm just saying that's what makes it worse. Yeah, like you see what you're saying. He's talking about. It's already bad, okay. but being the color of your skin it makes it, it worse. It compounds yeah. it, just oh, like with everything else. Yeah, yeah. But being being I, the color, I think I, I don't know if I told you this, but like being black, you got one strike. You are because you're black. Yeah. And he anything else comes behind it. <laughs> and he is black. He not he not like a black. He a, he is black. He is black. Yeah. No, bro, we not letting your black ass up in here. To, no, no. He'd have two strikes if he was white. You get a half strike when you're black. It is what it is. Like he he, he should have. At the end of the day, you gotta you gotta you gotta get along to get along. So he should have came in there, got his little agent, whatever. I understand. I still understand what what he's on though mentally. You just gotta yeah. let that go. You gotta let that because how much money have you lost trying to do it your way? So who is your team? Uh, right now, right now was all these trades. I'm not, I'm one of them niggas, man. I'm a bed man. So whoever the hot team at the time, I'm not loyal to anybody. The only person I was loyal to was Tom Brady. And now that he's gone, I, I'm, I'm going to just go with the Chiefs, bro. They didn't clearly took Mahomes and lifted him to the sky, right? He's the perfect blend of black. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's like, we don't want them to. Like, you know, that's why they got them in Kansas City. They don't want them to. They're not too much sunlight around this time of the year. They're like, don't let them out the house too long. We don't want them to get overcooked. He's perfect to be the face of the league because white people can see him and see themselves in him a little bit. You know what I mean? It's, it's a business. That's not even like a racist. It's like when you run a business like that, you want to connect to everybody. You need someone that kind of look like everybody. You know what I'm saying? And if, and if, if, there were more Asians in America. Like if there was like, you know, like a whole, whole, whole lot, Pat, they, Patrick Mahomes would be the face. It would be, they would figure out an Asian dude. Some out of, out of some, it's all business. We need a black and Asian dude because we need to connect with the country. So yeah, I'm gonna roll with, I'm gonna roll with Patrick because they're going to make sure he stays on top. They're going to protect him. So how many more rings do you think he's going to get? Yeah, he probably got two more in him. The NFL ain't like the NBA. Like when they pick their stars, and when the NBA pick you as a star, you go, you about you, <laughs> you, 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 you got a chance to get about ten rings. You know what I'm saying? NBA rings are like it's like you win one, and it's like I, right, what are the other five at? The NFL is like we'll let you get three. And now then, you back got a Hall of Fame career already. Yeah, unfortunately, which you know the way. The way the, the way world, he came in. yeah, he came in hot. 
Yeah, the and but that's the thing, like he's we be forgetting this social media thing, right? Has trained our brain the wrong way. We didn't we didn't fell out of love with the process with the what if you don't make it. Now you're just expected to be the GOAT in high school. You get what I'm saying? Like remember when we were young and the like there was a kid that showed promise and like when it was like a big thing nationally for a kid in the eighth grade to get a college visit, like dang. USC went to go see a nigga. You know, now, if you ain't got that in high school, you ain't nothing. Now, if you're in the middle school and a college ain't offered you nothing, now they feeling like I, I, I'm around kids that play sports a lot because my brother's a coach out here. Like they, they be feeling like, you know, like, dang, colleges ain't looking at me. I'm like, nigga, you in the seventh grade. Like who, like, like you got to <laughs> So I think that has set up the fact that must be expected to be goats out the gate. And we got to remember, Patrick is not a, this isn't, a, this isn't normal, bro. This nigga's throwing balls with his eyes closed behind his back. He's doing and one on a football field. We got to just understand, like, this it might not ever happen again. But I don't think so. I don't think so. So, you know. You know what, Chris, I'm, I'm going to hold you right there. Because it's funny you mentioned him throwing behind the back. Did you realize how then Aaron Myers said, I've been doing that for years. And, and everybody else, I've been doing that for years. Like, well, you weren't doing it in the game. <laughs> right. Like, right. Your right hand to throw with your left hand. You weren't doing that. <laughs> you weren't doing that in, in a game. No, not even that. You wasn't doing that in high pressure situations. No. I bet you no. weren't doing it in the fourth quarter on the yeah. on the last two minutes of the drive because you know they had to ate your ass up. But <laughs> it's like, Oh, 30 seconds left in the game, the playoffs. We it was like, bro, I don't know. <laughs> so you brought up the NBA. Who are you following in the NBA right now? What's your team in the NBA? Same logic, bro. Whoever the hell is look, right now, I was I was on LeBron's shoulders until this whole I don't know what the hell going on with the Lakers. So I just hopped off of that mug. And uh <laughs> go to state. Okay. Golden Steph State. or just the team? Uh, the team. I I ain't gonna lie. I'm more so in love with Golden State because of the whole, um, you know, they 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 built their team from from the draft, like that. Like I don't think that gets enough credit. You know, I think most people that follow basketball, we know that that was really um Mark's team for Jackson. it. Mark yeah, like, team. yeah, like like we we know whose team that was, but it is what it is. They they did the good drafting. It was, and everyone literally had to grow organically together. And you can't. The only people that can get in their way is themselves. Injuries, you know what I'm saying. Outside of yeah. that, injuries, yeah. Yeah. those, you know, stuff like that. Like no one, if you think about it, no one is just going in there and just beating them. You got to beat them when they injured. You got to beat them when niggas got contract negotiations or when they punching each other in practice. Either way. <laughs> They got to literally box each other for you to beat them in basketball. <laughs> Facts. So I Facts. Like, I've i always been, I, I played the ultimate team sport more than half my life. So when I see like a team built like that, you know, like, um, like quick story. I played, uh, I played semi-pro for this, uh, for this new team. And because it was a new team, they didn't have a lot of players. It was only 30 players on a football team, which is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if if that, it was like 25 players. And our coach loved the fact that that's all we had. He made us run all day, said, nobody plays a position. You play football. You play whatever I need you to play at that time. And we ended up being the most in-shape team in the whole league. We were the top. We were top. We had the number one secondary for more than half the season. We was playing against niggas with 60 people on their team. And they were gassed, and we sitting there like after one game, feeling like we can play another one. And he used to always say, "I don't need a bunch of great players. I just need a good few. I just need I need the right few people." And that's what I see when I saw Golden State. It's like they don't, they don't. I mean, granted, they got Hall of Famers on their team, but they built it from I don't need the greatest player at that time to match the other greatest player at that time. I just need a good few that's gonna come together, work together, and get good together. So, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this because not to switch subjects a little bit, but where did you get your discipline from? I don't know. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I mean, I, I grew up in a. I, 
I, Come I, on now, you're not helping me here. Come on, Chris. Well, I did. I, I had, you know, I got, I grew up with, with, with my parents. I'm one of those people, bro. I had, I had my mom and dad. I had uh, both sets of my grandparents that literally, you know, like both biological sets of my grandparents. I was always over there at their houses. Um, I have a really big family, Doug. You know, and you know, if you don't live in St. Louis, bro, if you don't got get your act right together, you're probably not gonna live long. And I seen that up close. So it was like a lot of things was kind of like anything that my parents or my grandparents, my uncles or my brothers or my sisters didn't teach me, I learned on the street. It's like, you know, like, yo, if I don't get this right or if I don't stay away from this, I'm probably not going to be around because I just lost this person in my life or my friend or a neighbor. You know what I mean? And they was doing what I, I learned at an early age. It's it's good to hear the words, hey, you missed it when you're growing up in the hood. So I would always, my parents kept me busy. All right. I played baseball, soccer, uh, football. I was a boy scout. You know what I'm saying? Like they just kept me leaving. I, I, my address was the hood, but my what, current, like where I'm at was always somewhere else. Always different. Yeah. I would yeah. always I would always pull up after practice, after some rehearsal, after whatever. And all my niggas would run down the street. Hey Chris, you missed it, man. Hey man, you missed it. So and so this happened. This person got jumped. Hey, you missed it. So and so got and I just remember at a young age. I When he starts talking on some powerful words, man, that's when they want to cut him off. No, you good. Not, I seen it. But I remember being young and being like, and I said out loud, like, dang, I'm always missing stuff, man. Like, this ain't fair. And my dad heard me. He was like, good. Like, keep missing. Keep, keep missing. Like, miss as much as you possibly can. And then see how long you live. And that's. I guess, you, uh, Chris, I want to say, I guess you grew up in kind of like the household I did, where the idle mind is the devil's workplace. There you go. I, my yeah. mom said that a lot. Yes. <laughs> the more, but she hated hearing the word bored. You was bored, man. I'm bored. Ain't as soon as you bored, meant she said oh. I'm bored chore. Like go do something. Like she would make us go outside, go get productive. Go. That's like even now, and in, in my age now, I can't stand just sitting around, bro. Yeah. And I yeah. know, I know they get on my ladies' nerves because I just be like, all right, I gotta. Can't you just chill? No. Like, <laughs> like I gotta. Yeah. Stay it was something so yeah yeah i can dig it I, I i'm the same way i'm always move going moving and grooving um before we wrap this up where can people catch you what are you doing um any shows coming up like what's, what's going on in the world of chris mosley within the next future okay so every thursday on my facebook page which will eventually be live on youtube and stuff as well but for right now if you go to my facebook page uh chris mosley i have a weekly um, we call it like a petty gender blame game where uh, it's called it's y'all fault. It's a sarcastic, funny game that's based on y'all, like the public. Like every day I see on my timeline, men blaming women for stuff and women blaming men for every little thing. So I decided to make a show out of it. So what me and my co-host Kai Burnett, she's a, uh, they call her Busty Chicken. And she does catering and stuff. We go live with each other. We take a bunch of petty subjects and celebrity uh, topics, and we argue back and forth. Hold on, time out. They call it what now? It's y'all fault. No, 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 no. Dusty what? chicken. Busty chicken. She got big titty. So <laughs> I'm not. I'm telling you what she called herself. I didn't call her that. <laughs> chicken. She got, but she calls it busty chicken. Her logo is a chicken with big titties. It's just, it's hilarious. It's like, dang, who? Hey, you are really rolling with what God gave you, I guess. So. It is. <laughs> It is. It's it, check it out. It's it's right. Thursday, but it's live on my page every Thursday um, at eight o'clock. You know our time. Um, we go live for about an hour. We try and keep it. You know, forty-five minutes. So we keep it quick. You know, we allow people to come on, give us their opinions. We blame each other for everything. Why are animals extinct? It's men's fault because blah blah blah. Uh, the Sierra, the Sierra being naked at the Oscars. You know, we we got good substance topics, but we also do the petty stuff. And that's really just my sarcastic way of making fun of how we are now as a society. So that's every Thursday. Um, you can definitely catch me on Instagram at I am Chris Mosley. I drop a different um, video sketch every day of the week. So it's always something funny on there. 
Um, I'll be at the Dallas Comedy Club uh, April 27th. Um, that's a Thursday at 7.30. So if anybody sees this in a year in the Dallas area, look up the Dallas Comedy Club. I'll be going through there. And one of the many cities that I'll be hitting up. Um, and, yeah, just follow me from there for any other updates. For real, for real. Uh, like hey, said, so where can they follow you at? Uh -huh. Again, where can they follow you at? So Facebook, Chris Mosey. Um, it's not that many Chris Moses that look like me, so just type it in, it'll be there. YouTube, uh, I got YouTube videos. Um, uh, Chris Mosley, once again, or if you type in Silly Man TV, that'll come up as well. Instagram, I am Chris Mosley. I, I make everything my name because I got CT, and just in case one day I wake up and forget my name, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> reality. Well, Chris, you know what? Thanks again for having you, uh, having you come on the show. If you have not seen this man live, you need to. And I'm going to do something here for you. I'm going to put a plug for you for Baltimore. My Baltimore people, get this man there. My Pittsburgh people, get this man there. Delaware, New York, Florida, because I know it's warm. Tennessee. Hawaii, because you know it's warm. Let's get him on the carnival cruises. Let's, let's get this. Virginia. I, tell you what, oh, I didn't say Virginia. Yeah, you got to say Virginia. Shut the up. whole DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Let's get this man out there. You want comedy? This is comedy. If you want a story, he's got your. He's got a story. You want to get told off? He can do that too. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we enjoy that. Now, I got one more question for you. Do you yeah. like boxing? Uh, I do, but I'm not as versed with it. Uh, I, you know, I watch. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. This weekend, there is a highlighted fight in Vegas. I think you should take a look. It's going to be one of those old school ones. Uh, yeah. David Benavidez yeah. and uh, Kayla Plant. And they ben, hate each other. And Benavidez is from here. And Benavidez is from Phoenix, right? Oh, yeah. I've got to watch now. Yeah. because yeah. He's from into... Phoenix. And they hate each other. It's, okay. It's, it comes come from the they finally, Yeah. They're so. they finally getting this fight. They've been going back at it for about, what, two years now? Two, three years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, they don't like each other. When I say they don't like each other, they don't even have a way. Yet. Send me, send me the info for that. I'll, I'll check that out this week. Oh, you just reminded me. I'm so sorry. This Saturday, even though it's kind of that's why I, every time something sold out, I take it out of my head. But I'm actually performing um, in a play this Saturday. It's a murder mystery play called Where Is Sapphire Blue, produced by uh, Sonia. Uh, her name is Sonia Camille. She's from Chicago, but she's a playwright. I've been okay. in a play before. This play has been in Arizona twice already. It's been in LA. It's a dope play. I initially wasn't um, a part of the cast, but they did have a comedian um, for a certain role. I don't think he could make it out here at this time because he's not from Arizona. So she plugged me in, and I just been I've been hitting it. So it's this Saturday, but you know she already that them tickets sold out already because you know. But y'all will see footage from it, I'm sure, or a little bit some clips from it or something. Definitely send it our way. Send it our way, and uh, next time uh, you got something like that going on, let us know. We will uh, definitely plug it. Yeah, plug and it. go and support all sure. day. Well, it's been another great episode of PD and J. What's good today? We got your boy Chris Mosley in the building. Make sure you check him out. Do not miss out on him because he will be. Why are you looking at I mean, <laughs> what are you talking about? Chris Nothing right here. What the hell, man? Plug it. This is, I do this every week. No, I do this every week. And anyway, Chris, thank you for being on the show. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, and thank every one of you who watched, and all of you that are going to come back and watch. Every week, every week, every week we do this. We appreciate you, man. And again, congratulations on all the accolades. Congratulations on being nominated for the awards. And you know what? Like you Go said, vote. Go no, vote. You're not even in from St. Louis. You still need to vote. Vote. Yeah. yeah, I don't care if you've never heard of me. Go vote. Help me beat. Everybody else on that list and make them mad because I already know what the hate going on. They're like, man, that nigga don't even live here no more. So, what? I go vote <laughs> my page, click on the link, go vote, vote Chris Mosley. The thing is, it's going to make you vote for other things as well. That's what's kind of cool. They kind of keep it fair. It's like, but just like when you go vote for electives, you don't be knowing all that stuff. Just click whatever name you like, 
But when it gets to comedy male comedian of the year, you know, right? Because like when we all went to go vote for Obama, we didn't know them other names. I was just there to vote for Obama and leave. It was like, what the who, what? The KKK prince for whatever, sure, whatever. I'll get Obama in that bitch. That's all I cared about. So yeah, same thing, same energy. Give me that same energy you give, and you know when you vote for politics and stuff. All day, all day. Well, until next week, folks. Stay tuned. Stay blessed. Stay dressed. Anyway, please, please stay dressed. Thank y'all <laughs> again. Thank you, Chris. Thank we'll you. see you next week. Y'all have a good one. And until then, we out. All right.